This episode of the Off-Road Podcast is sponsored by Warren Power Tank and Medical Gear Outfitters. Off-Road Podcast, episode 296, Nissan-powered Toyota. Tonight, Jeremy starts a fire, Aaron measures some dirt, and Ben still can't stop. Welcome to the Off-Road... Music? No music. Oh, okay. Welcome to the Off-Road Podcast, a podcast about everything off-road. We cover the news, review products, and interview people in the off-road industry. I'm your host, Ben. I'm here with my co-hosts, Jeremy and Aaron. And uh, later, we'll be joined by our guest, Kyle. The, the Week in Review is brought to you by Medical Gear Outfitters. What are you waiting for? Are you waiting to have a casualty on the trail? Check out MedicalGearOutfitters.com to get straightened out. Medical Gear Outfitters has everything you need, whether you're going out for the day or traveling on a year-long expedition. Head over there to get off-road specific kits that meet all of your needs. And while you're there, make sure you use Off-Road Podcast for 10% off. Speaking of Medical Gear Outfitters, I just saw a video of Dietrich um, on someone else's channel, and he was talking about the soft T tourniquet, soft tourniquet, and... Uh, I think I'm going to probably buy a couple of those. It looked pretty slick. Um, the one-handed application, it's got a buckle on it, so it's easy to slip around a leg and things like that. Yeah, it's, uh, if I remember correctly, they've made some great improvements over their first generation of that soft tee to where it's a little bit easier to use as a one-handed application now. Mm -hmm. And they're, they, I think they're the same price as a cat, a genuine cat tourniquet as well, so... Um, I think I'm going to check that out. Nice. Do they have any tourniquets for men with low T? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me guess. You're asking for a friend? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 For a friend. His name's Ben. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Ow. Ouch. Ouch is right. <laughs> Jeez, I think I got more hair on my face than you do, there, Jeremy. So Only because I shave yeah well to uh avoid any more awkwardness what have we been up to this week ben anything uh off-road related i guess you uh, can't stop well yeah no i uh I, I definitely can't stop so i i got my whole front end tore apart i went farther than just my uh bumpers or than just that wheel to fix that brake line um i've got my bumper pulled off i'm gonna refinish the paint on that pulled out my headlights because i discovered that um two of the tabs were broken um the directions for my bumper weren't the best on explaining some stuff and there are some brackets that should have been cut off um, what because the bumper flexes it pulls on those brackets that are connected to the headlights and so it broke those headlights another bumper that i had installed at work for a customer their direction said that you need to cut off these brackets or they'll interfere with your headlights well so uh, I've got new headlights on the way. They'll be here tomorrow. Uh, I'm going full LED with them. So like all, even the little turn signal bulbs, indicator bulbs in there, those are going LED. Um, so I'm just waiting for those to show up. Uh, I've got my brake lines to finish up. I needed a new brake caliper too, because um, that's what actually went bad. Yeah, there you go. So, so up on the new... screen is a picture of uh, what looks like a part out in somebody's driveway. So that's your, <laughs> that's your rig, huh? Yeah, that's cur currently my part out right now. Um, so I've got um, no wheel on the front. Um, I need new tires. Um, but uh, with yes, the you do. Deck, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you look at my my front tire right there, you can tell just how worn down it is, and you really can't tell. Uh, there's been a few other pictures where people have commented like, "You need new tires," and <laughs> yes, I do. So I'm um, getting new tires uh, with the Stimmy. Thanks, Obama awesome. or, or awesome. Biden or whoever. Um, so Kamala. Uh, I think it's Kamala. Is, uh, is it Kamala? My yeah. Kamala deck? Okay. President Kamala. <laughs> so I've got, um, I'm getting new tires. I think I'm actually, instead of going with the Patagonias, I'm going to go with their, uh, their Ultra. A Sears or, brand? No. You're going to get some tires from Sears? Uh, so the, uh, the, the hybrid Ultrains that they just came out with? So, yep. Nice. Um, so yeah, um, just 
working on the forerunner oh, and then I'm, I'm picking up some uh new rear springs for the rear end some heavies my buddy's selling off some uh overland uh what are they the uh om oh, um, icon oh, no, they're, the, they're the icon um heavies um hmm. he had them on the back of his rig with a steel bumper and all that extra crap and I, I definitely need some help in my rear end for my forerunner because when I go around corners with no sway bar in the front, it, it goes, whoa, yeah, no fun. So fixing that up. What about you, Aaron? What's new, man? Um, I was almost late to the podcast because the uh, excavator, excavation dirt guys were out at my property and painting lines in the dirt for the shop that is going up. I think they're going to be out here in one week digging dirt and uh, it's going to be exciting placing some ecology blocks and digging dirt so that we can um, land all the uh, land, all the flatness that I need because it's uh it's definitely a sloped piece of property from, from the high point to the low point is 58 inches and uh, that's not conducive to a flat shop. So, you got to dig it out. We're going to build it up with ecology blocks, put some drainage in, and then uh, the next step will be setting the post for the uh, pole barn. So, so yeah, they were out here today doing that. And then uh, over the weekend, I put a tonneau cover on the F-150 and tore into the Nissan Titan. Um, and... I still don't have any good news on the Nissan Titan. It is, uh, I tore, I basically took everything off the front end, the front bumper, the radiator, the condenser, the core support and things like that. And the fan so that I could get a, uh, breaker bar with a cheater bar on the breaker bar. And I can get about 12 degrees of movement out of the breaker bar back and forth. I cannot rotate the engine at all. So, um, you, um, did you uh, pull the spark plugs? That's the next, that's my last hope, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, I'm going to pull the spark plugs. And I just didn't have time to do that over the weekend with everything else that was going on. But um, it's not going to be an easy job. The back four spark plugs are like under the cowl. They've got that engine set way far back, which is good for um, uh, weight distribution, but bad for truck maintenance so yeah yeah so i'll pull those um coil on plugs off pull the uh um spark plugs out and i'll try one more time i also have a really really cheap ryobi scope that i think will fit down a spark plug hole so maybe i can see something see if there's anything to see down the spark plug holes i don't know but i know with the uh um the exped my ford expedition like getting those those back two spark plugs was such a pain but i got um it's got like a, a wobble on the spark plug um mm -hmm. so that you get a little bit of an angle on it yeah i've got i've got that and i've got other several universal joints and stuff like that so we'll we'll give it a go see what we get um and then the last thing was on sunday i booked um the airbnb for my trip to moab coming up in july so got that booked and got a bunch of campsites and stuff planned for when i'm in the telluride area i we don't know exactly what we'll do there but it's kind of critical to do all this planning ahead of time because i'm the plan is to drive the f-150 pulling a flatbed trailer with the frontier on on that trailer so that uh it'll be more comfortable and probably get the same or better fuel economy than if I drove my Nissan frontier the whole way. So, and then if someone's rig breaks down, we can throw the rig on the trailer and drive the other rig home. So. Unless it's my rig. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure we could still make it work. The concern with yours is that it might be wider than the flatbed trailer that I have. Yes. But that is the concern. We could, we could make Are you going better. Jeremy? I'm hoping to. We'll see. It's TBD. Oh. I already I, counted you out. I'm still fighting. Okay. But don't don't make plans for me. <laughs> I'll just be a happy accident. Okay. <laughs> that won't be the first time. 
Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking unless, of you, Jaren. Unless you're telling me I'm uninvited. No, no. I only counted you out in the sense that the last time we talked, it sounded like you had a 1% chance of going. Yeah, we'll see. 80% chance. I, I need to find some child care, I think. Yeah. To make it a possibility. We could get your Jeep on the trailer with uh, with no tires. We'll just drag it on the rotors up there. Yeah, that sounds great. It sounds great for those brand new axles. <laughs> well, I'm, you're going to break them anyways. That's the only reason why we're towing it back. <laughs> That's fair. No, we'll just go to Goodwill and get some snow skis and we'll <laughs> drop the axles on some snow skis or water skis or something and slide it in. Just put it on uh, jack stands. That that's stable, right? Harbor Strap freight down good enough. That. Sounds like terrible ideas. Yeah. Well, what have you been up to, Jeremy? Uh well, I got some rock lights installed. Uh and I was testing them and I uh, had a small electrical fire, but nothing too bad. What? <laughs> so the, the battery's out of the Jeep at the moment and it's sitting on the tool on the tool bench so i didn't want to put put it back into the jeep and so i just took mm -hmm. some jumper cables and uh and jumped it from the from the battery to the to the jeep and i wasn't paying attention i guess and i touched the bat touched the uh touched the two leads together and didn't realize it and so the uh jumper cables caught up, or started smoking well, at least it's <laughs> That's so exciting. It wasn't, it wasn't actually the Jeep, but it did scare the heck out of me. I'll tell you that much. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah, we're good. We got a comment here in the notes that says uh, Maris Adventure Park in Texas. What do you all think? And uh, I've not been to Texas with an off road rig and I've not I've not heard of that one. We'll have to look it up and get back to you. But um in, in my book, any off-road park is worth going to. I haven't heard of I haven't heard of bad ones. Yeah, I mean, I think there's probably ones that you wouldn't want to drive long distance for, but definitely if it's your, in your area, definitely worth checking out. Yep. yep. Most the only thing is maybe a rig being underbuilt for it or oversized for it. So I'm looking at the profile picture here of George, and it is. Uh, it's a it's a full size truck, so you just have to make sure that your rig can fit. Um, the LMTV did not fit in the off road parks that I took it to. Tahuya, yeah, not good. Tahuya, yeah. Um, well, it doesn't help that we have a lot of trees. No. Correct in the Pacific Northwest, yeah. I feel like there's probably less trees, so. Yep. Good luck, George. Did you do anything else, Jeremy? Uh, no, no, I did not. I'm still waiting on those axles to ship. They were supposed to ship on Friday and they did not ship on Friday. And I got, they must not be ready on the 22nd. Well, maybe see, maybe what they were telling you is it's Friday of next year. Well, they said Friday the 12th, but of now next year. Saying, yes. Now they're <laughs> saying the 22nd though. So I'm assuming they didn't mean next year, but so, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was probably the, the paint suppliers slowing them up like i talked about in last episode so just send them an email and say send them unpainted i'll paint them myself <laughs> i just need them except i they're, they're powder coated and i think i do want them powder coated okay all right powder coating tends to hold up a, a wee bit better than paint than krylon yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know i That's got some sure. hammered krylon you never I know i love i love hammered krylon because it just yeah hides all the ugliness of any poor cutting or fitting or not the best welding that you did well and my bumper is kind of that hammered look uh and so i painted it with some flat black and then realized how much of a texture there was on that because you can really tell where i painted it yeah <laughs> like oh i should yeah. probably fix that yeah hammered is good I like to get hammered.
Hey guys, we're looking to reach more listeners. We're going to start reading Apple iTunes reviews on air. If you hear yours, send us a message with your address, and we'll send you an off-road podcast sticker. You can find all of our social media by just searching our name. Now, go hit that subscribe button. We also want to thank our sponsor, Patriot Patch. Head over to patriotpatch.co and check out their selection of great patches, shirts, cleaning mats, signs, and stickers. You can also join the Patch of the Month Club for 15 bucks and receive a matching sticker, patch, and artist proof each month. And here is uh, this month's My Little Armalite. Um, we've talked about this one in the last couple shows. It's got some legit Irish history. And then uh, something happened this week. So hopefully if you're listening live um, or if we get this episode out before Friday at noon Pacific, you can get in on the Space Force patch series. So this is the third one in the series. They're only doing uh, 200 of these patches and they sell out fast. Um, it's all blurred out, as you can see on the screen, but um, you can really tell what it is. So it's an A-10 Warthog merged with a TIE fighter. So this series is kind of like, what if we took existing vehicles and modified them so that they could go into space to fight maybe Martians? I'm not sure who they're fighting. I mean, you can really tell it's an A-10 because there's an A-10 behind it that's not blurred. <laughs> Clearly, yep. <laughs> they're really not hiding the ball on this one. No, they're they're definitely not. But even if it was, even if that wasn't behind there, it's just a classic A10 with the giant um, engines on either side of the fuselage, and then the curvature of the outer wings is clearly like a Tie Fighter bomber. So I'm I'm excited to see what it looks like once it's unblurred. The last two were pretty slick. The first one was like a a Humvee with rockets. And uh, the second one was a, the second one was like a Chinook helicopter, but with no rotors and it had like rocket pods on it. So it was pretty slick. It's a, a good looking, uh, good looking thing. Yeah. If only I didn't have a job, I could uh, buy all these. The news is brought to you by Power Tank, the ultimate mobile onboard air system for performance, versatility, and reliability. They are your source for all air-related accessories. Check them out at powertank.com. Well, uh, we got the first article here. It's uh, Magna is releasing an e-beam axle, uh, and they hope to turn everyday uh, pickups into electric vehicles. So. This is kind of a plug and play uh, for existing pickup platforms. Uh, not saying that you can go and buy it and throw it into your vehicle. It's it's made to uh, be adapted to a manufacturer's vehicle at the uh, at the plant. So they're trying to get uh, get people to install these on current trucks uh, from the factory. So it comes in a 120 or a 250 kilowatt variety. Um, not really sure how that equates to power, but uh, I think we have Kyle here now, and uh, he could probably tell us a little bit more about what kind of power that is. Do you know how well, much uh, 120 or 250 kilowatts would be? Uh, yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot of power. Uh, my my uh, the Nissan Leaf motor I used in my Toyota was 80 kilowatt hours, and that's 107 horse uh, 80 yeah 80 kilowatt hours. That's 107 horsepower and 187 foot pounds of torque. So 120 would be approaching 200 horsepower and then 250 is a lot. That's like uh yeah. big ma- horsepower. Yeah. Type stuff. Yeah. You could tow yeah. a bathroom 250 kilowatt hours. Well, I mean that that's part of the reason that they are looking at this uh this method for electric vehicles. So typically the electric vehicle trucks are uh going to be an IRS, so it's got the ind- independent suspension in the rear and uh so they're trying to get a little bit better ride height and towing and payload capacity over the traditional uh, EV pickups. So what we need to do is get these to market, get them in rigs, wait for the trucks to crash, buy them at the wrecking yard. You got it. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then what you do is you cut the ends off and you put uh, either spider tracks or Dana 60 knuckles on them. You put yes. the steel so you can make it a steer axle. So you have one in the back and then you have one in the front with Dana 60 turning parts on it, throw your hydro ram on it and you're ready to take on anything or portals. Yeah. Portals would be really sick. Portal ends. Ah. 
yeah, yeah. That, would, yeah. that would be the bee's knees which sure, you yeah. might actually need portal ends with these because looking at the photos it it's i mean it's really hard to tell uh but it looks like it might hang down lower than a traditional uh traditional axle yep. and i'm pretty sure they weren't planning on you bashing this thing on rocks so right it looked like an aluminum casing so you'd yep. need to some kind of chromoly diaper around the bottom but that said <laughs> 14 bolts are super super popular and off-road and they hang low that's why they shave them to a third they call it the 13 bolt mod so you shave about an inch off the bottom because they they're mm. they are really low so well, I, I i think they'll be out in the trails i hope so i think eventually yeah yeah <laughs> well i'm gonna give it, give it a couple years that's trickle down okay. technology in the truest that's form it. there mm -hmm. you go uh, our next story here is a YouTuber is charged with 18 criminal counts after an infamous Ram TRX jump video. Uh, apparently, YouTuber Street Speed 717. Um, apparently, the uh, Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission got a little angry at him after they caught wind of his vid videos. Um, he's got two counts of disturbance of waterways and watersheds, six counts of pollution of waters, six counts of littering, four counts of misuse of property, and uh, this would equate to like eight third degree misdemeanor charges, four second degree summary offenses, and six first degree summary offenses. Um, I, for I, I, I don't know how that works because it was on like his private property. Uh, so, so it wasn't his private par property, but it was someone's private property. Okay. So it's on private property. I thought I heard that it was his private property. Someone in the comment section was saying it was his, but what? regardless ir irregardless it's private property it's on a stream going through private property one of the things that they're upset because he was driving down the length of the stream and i get that um you shouldn't do that rather than fording the creek the stream the river whatever at the shortest distance he was driving into it and driving down it so um did it destroy fish habitats i don't know that they're claiming that it that it does or did. I don't know if there's fish in that at all, but but they're also like charging him for littering and pollution. And it's a brand new truck that did not break in the water. So yeah, it's it's not it's not like an old leaky Jeep or something. Or a new leaky Jeep. Um <laughs> or I guess that'd be a Land Rover. Um but yeah, so what is he littering? Maybe maybe parts broke off of his truck, but I'm sure it, well, number one, it's private property. So you can litter all you want on your own property or on someone else's property unless they charge you. And number two, it's not leaking any fluids. What what in the world? So, yep. Uh, apparently lawyers are involved now and they're hoping to get everything settled. Um, he yeah. insisted that um, there was no intent ill intent while filming and he's confident they'll be able to work out the issues the funny yeah. thing is ill intent um uh, whether you have it or not negligence is a thing so ne yeah it's, it's like Certainly. that's kind of a stupid comment guy <laughs> but it exactly, is exactly yeah well, yeah depends. so we'll find out it it honestly depends if uh some of if the laws that or the charges he's being charged with have intent as part of the part of uh the law because there are some some things that don't require intent and some things that do require specific intent so well yeah negligence and all that i yeah. think that's it yeah, although that makes it's, sense. it's it what what are the rules there what's the rules for that stream but maybe when that land was purchased it came with you know you can only do certain things because this is part of a watershed so you can't mm -hmm. you know th th there might be rules can you can you um uh, cut a new stream so that you change the water flow i'd probably not I, I it all depends on what the laws were you know yeah but for sure i mean i i'm all about ripping a truck through a river i love doing that shit so. uh-huh <laughs> yeah it's uh it sounds to me like um it sounds to me like someone had a hard on at the the government and they just yeah i'm sure some hiker was like look what he's doing He's doing yeah. bad things. Did did you guys actually watch the video? No, I have. I, I, I did. did watch the video, but I didn't see the jump portion of the video. So yeah. I watched. Awesome. 
<laughs> it was it was awesome, but it was not a soft landing. Oh no! <laughs> Wrecked it. Brand new truck, just destroyed. Oh yeah. I, I watched uh, or I saw snippets in the article of his jump, like where you see him in the air, and it it didn't look like it was going to end all that well. No. Kind of reminded yeah. me of uh, when the Raptors first came out, and people <laughs> were jumping them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that that yeah. popular video of that black Raptor that overshot the jump. Yes. Oh yeah. By, Lots. A long shot by a yeah. mile. That, that was, <laughs> his air, his airbags all go off. Yeah, that was Alex Wacker. He's a ultra four driver. He was. He's not anymore. Now he races a trophy truck. Uh, yeah, wild, wild cat for sure. Nice. Yeah. But which, which you think he would know what the proper speed for that jump was? Oh no, not him. He's he's one of the worst ultra four drivers ever. He's terrible. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he's bad. He, he, he basically left with his tail between his legs. He spent all that money on a beautiful car and couldn't, he couldn't barely do anything. Yeah. He's a terrible driver. Oh, oh he did something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's that's famous it now. Yeah. yeah. Go prepared with Warren Industries. They produced the first recreational winch in 1959 and lead the industry with their dedication to quality and reliability. When you dig yourself in deep, make sure you have the right tools to get yourself out. Get Warren equipped and go where others can't. Now, let's get ready for adventure and head into our main topic. Well, we've been joined by Kyle. Uh, You've heard him talk a little bit. Uh, he was a um, little late on getting here, and uh, but this is where he, we're talking to him. Um, we're going to start off, Kyle, with our, our Fast Five Facts, uh, just to get a little bit started on getting to know you. So, uh, new or old vehicle? Old. Summer or winter camping? Summer. Rock, sand, snow, or mud? Rocks. Favorite vehicle brand? <sighs> Uh, if I got to say one, it's got to be Toyota. There we go. Yeah. Got, I was rooting for Nissan. Crossing his fingers I was rooting for, for Nissan. Nissan. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not very brand loyal at all. I drive anything. I bought all kinds of stuff in my in my few years here. And uh, yeah, no, I, I got to say Toyota, if anything. And then uh, favorite tire? Um, <laughs> I, uh, I probably boggers. <laughs> but uh, uh no i gotta say mile star mile star tires for sure good people over there yeah yeah so how did you get started in off-roading uh well first i want to say sorry for being late everybody um oh, i just it's all good it was a total oh, no, no you you were good you, you it, generally at the start of the show we have like a mini introduction of you and you join for the rest of the stuff you were fine on yeah. being late you, it's all yeah. good man my apologies was not my intent. I just got tied up with what I was doing and I got here as soon as I could. My bad. Um, I got started off roading. I mean, geez, I got a power wheels when I was like real little, I got a mini monster nice. truck. I kept, I ruined that thing, but yeah, pretty quick. And then as soon as I was old enough to drive my dad's craftsman lawnmower, I was getting that stuck in the woods. And then <laughs> I think I was 10 and I got a go-kart like a little one wheel drive, three and a half horsepower, no suspension, your dog thing. And mm-hmm. I just ruined it like instantly. My poor pops was trying to keep it fixed and keep it welded together and just trying to keep it running. And I, I couldn't help him. I could just watch him and learn and then break it in the first 30 minutes. I got it. He got it going. So then I got a quad and then, uh, then it was quads through high school and uh, we, we had a Jeep. My sister got a Jeep when she was in high school and I got that thing stuck a few times. And then, uh, then I got an 86 Toyota. It was kind of my first four wheel drive, my own truck. Um, beat the crap out of it. Actually, that's the nicest I ever sold a vehicle. It was in nice shape when I bought it. It was better than I bought it. Uh, so from there I got a four, an 87 four runner that had 35s on it. And, I, yeah, that was my first motor swap. It took me like ten months. It was ridiculous, <laughs> but uh, I did get I did get it running. It drove onto the guy's trailer who bought it. Like it was barely running, but I did swap the engine and it did drive onto a trailer. That was the last time I saw it. And then uh, I don't know. From there, I got into extreme off roading. I was I was way into dirt bikes, but when I came out to Southern California to ride dirt bikes, I met Ultra Four. I volunteered for them. 
And that's when I, I learned way more about like, um, you know, unlimited off-road racing and, and, and extreme off-road. And ever since that, I've been totally bit 100%. Like, so I think about all day. It's all me and my friends talk about like, yeah, but I, yeah, I got started in a power wheel. So I guess. What what was the first road worthy vehicle that you took off road? Would that be, have been the Jeep? Um, so when I first got my license, my we, I got the hand me down SUV, which was a fantastic uh, uh, thing to have. You know, my my parents they 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 had a car for me when I turned seven sixteen seventeen. It was a Montero, a two thousand one Mitsubishi XLS Montero, the big one, the like the mm-hmm. one of those independent front and rear with a three point eight. That thing was sick. I mean, it was like yeah. a valley car, and I, dr- I it would like drift really well on like gravel parking lots. So that was the thing I would do mostly with it. And I always got in trouble when I brought it home dirty, you know. And then I've got dents in it in the, in the trees uh, back home. Uh, just you know, taking my friends up in the woods and being hooligans. And then uh, I didn't really, really wreck it, but I did. I definitely got some dents on it. Um, but that thing really handled good and it was pretty fast. I've kind of been looking for another one. It's it's they're, they're pretty sweet. So that I, that would be kind of the first one I really started messing around with was an 01 Montero XLS. That thing was dope. Was Yo, like that. That, that sounds very uh gamblerish. Yeah. Oh, that'd be like a cheater gambler car cuz it's like actually really good off-road. Like this Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they they are. Yeah. They're a hidden gem for sure. Yep. 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 So, uh, what are you driving now? I'm driving the only street legal. Yeah. The only street. Yep. The only street legal vehicle I own right now is my 2001 F three fifty crew cab, long bed, 7.3. Um, that's the only thing I have that's street legal for sure. That's a solid truck though. Yeah. 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 I just, I just got a few months ago. I've been, I've been really liking it. Um, I got it to, uh, pull my fifth wheel. I live full time in a fifth wheel toy hauler. Uh, this was a way that I could like get way cheaper rent. So I could, I'm just in a trailer park. This way I could get uh, uh, live in the city closer to work and not have to pay crazy rent. And now I'm in something I own instead of paying someone else's mortgage or anything like that. So I got it so I could tow around my house. You know. There you go. Yeah. So do you it's... have a most embarrassing moment on the trail you want to share? Oh uh, boy, there's a couple. Uh, there's one I'll share only because, not only because, but it has been made public. Uh, my <laughs> last Thanksgiving, I drove down to Johnson Valley with my solid axle Forerunner on my on my trailer. I brought my silver. I had a Silverado at the time. I towed it down. It was an '89 Toyota solid axle, basic solid axle truck with 37s. And, um, I, cause I worked night shift at the time I got in at like three in the morning and everyone was sleeping, but I was like wide awake. I usually go to bed at 8 AM and I was jacked that I was there, you know? So I, I got it off the trailer and it was idling and I was like, all right, I'm going to go for a ride solo. <laughs> and the plan was to drive to the top of Fisher mountain and watch the sunrise. Like that's what I was going to do. And, uh, and I, I was going slow. I was by myself and I was, I, I thought I knew how to take the easy way up and then it ended up being a harder way. And I was already in it. I wasn't turning around. I was stacking rocks for myself and like, just, I don't know. Go, I didn't know what trail I was on. Um, and then, I mean, now it's like four or 5 AM getting closer to six. I'm one of the tires burped out all the air. So it, that's all it did. It just burped out. So I didn't get like a flat, I didn't screw it up, but I, it burped out all the air. And I had a, like a few choice. I could see camp like down the hill, like through the valley on the other side of the valley it was miles away, but I could see it. So I had a straight shot and I was like, all right, I just run back to camp, get my friends. They'll be up around that time, seven, eight, probably. And we'll just come back and air my tire up. That way I won't wreck the tire or wreck the wheel trying to get out of here. So I just started like walking, jogging. And uh, it took me like, it took like three hours to go from the truck. it was far it was oh, brutal. far away it was and uh and then when we got there you know um we, we hopped in my buddy's truck and we started going back out there i couldn't i couldn't find the canyon i could not for the life of me remember oh what no because <laughs> oh, i was no. 
I had a few drinks too. So like they, that had worn off. So I was in like a totally different mindset now. Cause I'm like, so it's the morning. I don't like, I couldn't figure it out. So we had to all day. It stayed out there. It was Thanksgiving. So then we had Thanksgiving dinner and it's like, we're not going to go look for it in the dark. So we left it out there in a whole night. And oh, uh, I went and look, I went and found it the next day. It was on, yeah, I came down wrecking ball by myself at 3 a.m. Like that's, that was the trail. And uh, it was, it was sitting there with it. No one touched it. There was fresh tracks right around it, but no one touched it. So um, we aired up the tire and everything was good. Um, but that, that was pretty embarrassing. I, I left, I couldn't find my rig. It was left that's, out there for like over 20 really hours. Funny. Yeah. That's really funny. Yeah. That was, that, that's, that's probably up there. It's gotta be up there. You uh, definitely are lucky that nobody messed with it. Yeah. The other thing too, is that it was way up in the rocks. So the kind of people that are enjoying their wheelers up in those rocks are the real hardcore kind of wheelers. So it's not like it was just around a bunch of riffraff, you know, I mean, the the people who are up there are the, are the kind of folks that wouldn't necessarily go through your stuff. Of course I did get lucky, but that just goes to show a lot about like the off-road community and, uh, and hardcore wheelers, how they wouldn't do that. And they didn't, you know, so. Well, they under, understand the value of your stuff as well as theirs. So, Yeah. And everybody out there had to, had to work hard for it. So when they see that, I mean, not that my stuff was like really nice, but I mean, there was, you know, look right in, there was radios, there was a high lift jack, you know, you could have grabbed that stuff easy, but nope, nothing was touched, you know? So um yeah it was it was pretty pretty cool cool well to uh offset every embarrassment we got to hear about a win so what's your biggest win on the trail man that's got to be king of the Amers this year uh completing the the ev course which was the first lap 76 miles um we we did it we did it as a team we got that car across the line uh that that has to be my biggest win to date for sure that yeah definitely so where's your favorite place to go wheeling at? Uh, so I've been out in California for a few years now. Um, I did really like uh, in Kingston, Massachusetts, behind the mall there. And then some of the stuff in Southeastern Mass is cool. But for sure, it's got to be Johnson Valley. It's probably my favorite. Uh, the rocks are insane. The, the, the amount of places you can go, it's so wide open. You can literally drive anywhere you want. There's lots of cool stuff. I always find something new out there um that's probably it For, ford ice was really cool too i really like that trail so far i haven't been on the rubicon but ford ice was super fun you ever get a chance man ford ice is friggin' dope that's a cool spot is there any any places that you want to wheel that you haven't wheeled at yet yeah all the other ones i haven't been to yet <laughs> <laughs> anyone in particular anyone in particular For something sure. like it's on your book on your uh your bucket list uh, the Rubicon. Um, but the, the, the one that I would say I, I've been to Moab too. That's actually, that's another, uh, incredible once in a lot, like unbelievable place to go driving is, is Moab. Unbelievable place that I haven't been yet. I I've heard about surprise Canyon in, um, in Arizona and it's, it's difficult to get to it's, it's off the beaten path as I understand it. Uh, it used to be a wheeling trail and there was like a mine way up on the hill. And then at one point there was like this, um, the mountain erupted with like a, a fresh spring and it eroded the road, like very, very bad, like so bad that there's still like mining trucks and 18 wheelers and cabins up there. And like people's hmm. things, like pickup trucks that were just left at the top of this like mountain because there's no way to get them down. And you can like get up this Canyon with a really badass uh, rig if you got one. And I've always kind of wanted to do that. That's a place that I've heard about and I've never, uh, I don't know too much more about, but, uh, that was Canyon, Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's supposedly really gnarly. Like you, you know, a built Yoda or just a, a Jeep on 35 is like, no way you need horsepower and big tires. Mm. So that's, that's what that's yeah. Surprise Canyon for sure. That's why I want to get there one day. So uh, let's jump on into uh, talking about the build. So why don't you give us a brief overview of uh, your forerunner? So, I mean, it started with, I, I just, I've always wanted to do an electric crawler. And uh, I think there could be a lot of benefits to uh, electric drive and rock crawling. 
and my Toyota was a three liter automatic and it, it, uh, I melted it. So, and that those motors aren't worth really repairing exactly. So it's like, well, that's a perfect candidate then, you know? And, um, I, uh, so I bought a Nissan Leaf cause Leafs, I, I looked at them. They were so cheap, um, that it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, I'll get, I'll get one of those. And, uh, at that time, that's what I was going to do. I was just gonna make a crawler. And then I talked to Dave Cole. He said, oh, we're doing an EV class this year for the first time. And my thought was like, oh, geez, that means I'm making a race car. Like, uh uh-oh, how am I going to do this? We only had a few months. And so I I knew that he had a stock class forerunner that used to race, that his son used to race. uh, And he had raced um, just sitting in the weeds, sort of like he'd been there for a couple of years. And I I asked him if – if I could convert that, cause there's no way I could make my forerunner a race car with a proper cage and all the seats and everything in time. And, uh, and he said, yeah, go for it. That'd be sick. Like that car's tired. That'd be a really cool way to breathe new life into it. That's what I want you to do. So it's still technically his forerunner. Like I just converted it and I'm, I'm racing it. Uh, and it will, it's still his, it'll go back to him. But, uh, yeah, we just, we got the car, we brought it up, we took the 22 RE out of it, and then we kind of used a lot of the internet, the magic of the internet, and people on um, DIYelectriccar.com, like we searched forums and found ways to uh, adapt the, the the leaf motor to the transmission, and then we made a sort of simple engine mount, like you might imagine, to connect to the, to, to the frame, and we I bought uh, electric, vertical, electric vehicle conversion components, off of uh off off of like a, a conversion company up here in santa rosa california and made it all talk and basically it's a stock class forerunner but we didn't touch the suspension didn't touch like the it still has it's a five speed with dual cases we didn't change any of that we just changed the drivetrain and put the batteries in the bed that's all we really had time for and we barely made it so mm that's what it is. I mean, it's, it's basically still a stock class Toyota. We just replaced the 22 R with the Nissan leaf motor and slid batteries in the bed. That's it. So did that, that, um, engine mount directly to the transmission without any special adapter plates or any of that? We had to make all that. Um, what we, we found a CAD file for the, for the, for the face of the Nissan leaf motor and, and a, Part of the reason why I chose the Nissan Leaf was because you can unbolt the motor from the gear reduction. So just like all electric cars, this is like a, it's not a transmission. It's a, it's like a, a one speed reduction, right? Mm-hmm. Well, you can, uh, the Nissan Leaf, you can unbolt that. And then sticking out of the motor is like a little output shaft. And so that makes sense, right? You can, you can adapt a shaft to a, to another shaft, right? P- pretty easily. And it has bolt holes. So we found a CAD file for that face. And my buddy uh, who work, uh, he works in a large manufacturing house, he was able to have that uh, plasma cut for me. And then we plasma cut another plate that had the face of the, the Toyota transmission, right? The bell housing. So now we had two plates that we could weld to. And then we, found, we took a Toyota clutch center because that slides over the transmission shaft, right? The input shaft. And then user main source on DIYelectriccar.com, he found that a 1968 to 1970 Fiat Spider convertible, like the car, had the same like clutch splines that fit over a Nissan Leaf output shaft. It's like wow. 20 millimeters, 22 spline or vice versa. I kind of forget. But so I bought one of those clutches. So it was like 50 bucks. Ripped the clutch apart. So we just had the center. And we, we made a six inch coupler using DOM steel and we take welded it and then we sleeved it again and then take welded that. So it was pretty strong for 187 foot pounds. And that's how we adapted the output shaft of the motor to the input shaft of the transmission. And then with the plates, we, you know, just, we made up a, an adapter, right. Um, and bolted it in. And so far it's been working. So you took, two shafts and you connected them with a coupler that's right yeah it's like almost cool. like toilet paper roll kind of that go yeah. that for both shafts if you kind of nice yeah so how long you mentioned that you kind of had two months to get this together did it take all of that two months or or how, uh, we how did that work out we had a little more time that we we really started in like october is when we started taking the nissan leaf apart 
and we had till February. So closer to like four months. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, it actually worked out great because I bought the car and it was running and driving. It was a 2015. It was the nicest, newest car I've ever owned. It had wow, D, like <laughs> awesome. And I, I was driving it to work because my truck went down with a transmission and uh, it took like two months to get that fixed. So I was driving the car every day. That's my only car. And uh, and then my truck got fit. And then, like right then I drove the car to my buddy Will's uh, shop, his garage, and we started tearing into it. Um, in our, so that we started tearing into the car in October and I forget exactly when we got the race truck there, but it was around the same time. And, uh, d- yeah, so we started in October and we got it to the line in February. That's awesome. Yeah, it was, it was a grind. It was like every day off and every day after work. It like, sounds like mm-hmm. a SEMA build, huh? Yeah. I mean, yeah. It was, except it's complete. It, it, it did have a front drive shaft, like a real one. Yeah, yeah. It, it worked. Yes, it, yes. It, it, real four wheel drive. Yeah. So, uh, what was what would you say was the biggest challenge of building this vehicle? Um, while we were building it, what was tough was that we we had some components. And we had a direction, but as we were doing it, we changed plans so many times and so many facets of it that, you know, we were kind of doing things twice a lot because mm. we we didn't have the luxury of knowledge. Like we didn't know and we didn't have time to like kind of draw something on a napkin, like, like really like draw better than a napkin but like really draw out what we want to do fill out the components list get them there and then execute the build like that's not what we did we figured it out as we went the battery system like changed i don't know four times five times like we kept changing plans on that and then we knew we needed more capacity so we had to buy a different kind of battery it's still nissan leaf but it's totally different so we needed to make the whole system work with two kinds of batteries that had to fit into a common rack. So it, it we just, we, we had, we kind of added extra complexity as we went. So that, that's what I would say is the most charging, challenging part of it. Um, uh, and then, but really the, the hardest part I've had so far that is, has been charging, charging those batteries is pretty complicated. I didn't know that that was going to be the toughest part. It was easy to make the wheel spin, honestly, like, just to connect the wires and set up your pedal and like figure it out and get the, get the computer to talk to the, to the motor and get the computer to talk to the batteries and just let it rip. Like that was way easier than figuring out the charging system. There's like the charging has way, is way more complicated than talking to the motor and making the wheel spin. So interesting. The, yeah. The tra- there's a lot to it when it comes to the charging the batteries that I've found. Um, well, uh, is, is there anything on the build that went a lot smoother than you expected? Uh, Will Will really knocked out the engine mounting like super well. After we figured out the coupler, um, it, Will Will's like one of my best friends. I, I work with him. That's how I met him. And you know when we came, when I I was like, hey, I want to make this car. Like I don't I I don't have a shop. He has a you know he's a shop garage kind of. And he was like, dude, bring it on by. Like, let's do it. I'm like, do you, do you know what you're signing up for, man? This is like, this is going to be crazy. And he's like, yeah, let's go to KOH and let's, let's take it on. Let's, you know, like, mm. this is going to be every day. He's like, you got it, man. And, um, and his wife and his two sons, they really took me in. And like, I was there every day. I basically lived with them. And, uh, he, he really knocked out the engine mounting. Like, like it came out really good. And he did it. Like, we, we just talked about some points, like what we were both thinking, and I turn around working on something else. I turn back around and like it's done. Like and it came out sick. So I would say that that would be one of the smoothest things. Yeah, he he nailed it. Sure. How many how many people were on your build team and how many people went with you to hammers? So the the I would say the core uh, of who got the car who really got the truck done was me and Will for sure. And then right there was Charlie Charlie Pangolin and he. He's a, another friend that um, his profession is in high voltage systems for the city, like buses and trains. So he he like he jumped our team's knowledge like you wouldn't believe. He cut the build time in half essentially 
when it comes to the high voltage stuff because i i really didn't know what i was doing and he yeah. helped me so much he like just being there like it's like two hours of working with him i could i learned so much that it would take me two weeks to figure out what i could learn with two hours with him so he, he helped out like crazy when it comes to the high voltage stuff and uh jeff webb uh helped out a lot and uh, rob gersky um, and there was a few others. There's probably like a good five or six core team, R Rick, our neighbor, and uh, a few others. Um, and then who came to Hammers? I think we brought my, my sister and her boyfriend showed up. My, my cousin came, my girlfriend came, my dad and two other cousins. And then Will and Jeff came. So, and Diego so that that was about our core team, but then I was also part of uh, like my, my other friends that I camp with every year there. They were super supportive. They helped us out so much. Texas Jesus, who built the car originally, he really helped out when we were there, and uh, so many others. All of Team Baker, that uh, is what I would say. If they're listening, Team Baker kicked it. He killed that. Uh, he kicked it. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Killed it. Uh, Are so you gonna use um? like solar to help you charge it um in the future like i i i've i've watched a lot of youtube videos where people use like the lease nissan leaf battery packs and they'll like use them at like a tesla wall at their house um yeah. and use solar to charge them is that something that's viable to use it to charge it up so that's absolutely where my mind is i that goes along with trying to create a, a truly green race effort it's never going to be truly green because the all these materials take a lot of fossil fuels to create right i mean just the shipping yeah. of the right? like you can't yeah but what I, what i'd like one step towards that is to show that all of the energy the car spent on race day was completely renewable and so a way that we can do that is by using solar panels right now kind of the trouble is like there's no there's a re the reason why there's no solar panels on the car is because even if we cover the hood the roof and even put some on the back if it's sat all day and like a perfect sunny day in the desert, you'd only get like, like two and a half, three miles. Like that's, yeah. so it's, it's not worth it to put it on the car for the complexity and the weight. Not that they're that heavy or that complex, but it's just not worth it. What, where my mind goes is I, I want to have on a, on like a pit truck or a pit trailer. I want to have a large battery bank of like several leaf batteries, let's say, or te Tesla bat or whatever, any kind of battery and have a large solar array that's sort of like, I don't know, is like, you know, maybe 10 yards by 20 yards or something, something you can fold out of a trailer or set up so that those panels are charging the main pack all week or the, even the week before the race. So you can say that all the energy that you created was from the sun. And then on race day, when the race car comes into pit, you, you DC to DC charge from that main pack you connect to the small pack that's in the car to the big pack and it juices it up quick. And then you, and then you keep going. And by the end of the day, after a few pits, you'll use up the energy, but you can actually say it's all from the sun. It's mm -hmm. not perfectly green because you're using a lot of batteries, but at least we're not using a generator, which is directly burning fossil fuel. We're, we're not there yet. I want to work on that. And there's a few other options. Like we could use a hydrogen fuel cell as a generator in, instead, because with the solar, you have lots of like, you know, now you're setting up a huge solar array and that takes up space, you know. So I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. Um, definitely that's where my mind's at, whether it's solar or some other source. Uh, that's what I want to do for our race program. Absolutely. It's just tough because it, it, it takes a lot of panels and a lot of time in the sun to generate yeah. as much energy that we need because we really use a lot of juice in a 5,000 pound race car with 35 inch tires in the sand you know, going up and down hills. That takes, that takes a lot of juice, you know? Absolutely. So, uh, the vehicle vehicle is built. Now let's talk about, uh, KOH. So, uh, how many, you said that this was the uh, first year that they had the EV class. Uh, how many vehicles are racing this year? Just me. Just you. <laughs> yeah. We were the only yourself, right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, it was, you know, I def we kind of used it as a challenge, right? So it's not really a race if you're not racing against someone specifically, right? Um, we And that's how we viewed it. I don't really, we did get a trophy, like a first place trophy, and it's awesome. Like, it's it's cool. But I, I, I still don't, like, we need to beat someone. You know, I, I want competition. Um, 
And we also didn't go into the rocks. We didn't go into the second lap, the rock lap. This year it was just the the one desert lap, which is less way less technical, of course. Uh, we want to improve. We want we want to do the rocks and we want competition so that we can really say we we uh, you know really really won. I, I'd say we completed the challenge that was set in front of us. Uh, and I want to beat someone, and I want to beat them in the rocks. So we're working on it. We're getting there. We're getting there. We need someone to show up too. So I hope uh, I hope there's a, a couple of cars next year. I think should, there will be. You should just start mentoring your own competition just to get them into the race. So I have a, a build on DIY electric car. Um, my username is Electric Yoda, and it. Uh, oh no, it's Rock Crawler on DIY. It's it's, it's just Rock Crawler. And I have pictures of everything I did, like a big ass build thread, huge pictures right up close of everything I did. I'll share uh, something I need to do is I need to like uh, finish it a little bit more and share the exact CAD files I used, share the, the clutch part numbers and things like that. Um, exactly what I did with the power steering. I used a Volvo, a 2006 Volvo pump off of eBay. It was from like a junkyard car. So it's like an electric over hydraulic pump. And that's how I got my steering. Um, there's a few, like I, I can have all that splayed out and be like, look, if you have a Toyota, you can make electric. It's not that hard. Check it out. Like this is what, this is what you can do. Um, and, uh, even go from there. Now that we've figured out the coupler, I don't mind making them. If, if people would, would buy them, I'm not, not for like a super expensive amount, but just enough that it makes it worth it, you know, for them and for me. Um, it, it's pretty cool. If something can just be shipped to your house and you can use it, that's worth something, you know? So, yeah. um, it would certainly would cut down the build time. So that, and maybe the adapter plate too. So Nissan Leaf to Toyota, here's your adapter plate. Here's your coupler. Bam. Like that's, that really helps out, makes it quick. So that's something we've tossed around a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, one way or the other, I, I definitely, I definitely want to race someone in a true electric car. Um, so I want to do this now, but yeah. <laughs> can you, can you summarize your race? Yeah. Yeah. It was like, man, it was surreal. But I, so I've been going to hammer since 17. I haven't missed one. I've been to a lot of other uh, desert races as well. I went to a bunch of ultra four races and the Baja 1000, Baja 500, Nora. Um, been to a couple of them, the mint. And to actually get to do it myself, I, I was crazy. Like, the morning of like me so my sister was my co-driver uh we got suited up we took a couple pictures of the family and uh you know it's cold it's early and we get in the car and we, we think we're ready i don't know we're as ready as we're gonna be and get to the line we're the last car off the line there was like about 100 cars in front of us we were the last ones and uh i don't know we took off and it went pretty good uh we got my major thing was I wanted to get into Hammertown. And then the next thing was to get to the line. Cause you could still break down in Hammertown. You know, you could still like cars would stop working right there. You need to get to the line. And then I wanted to get outside of the short course and get around the first mountain. If we broke down over there, that's fine. I just wanted to get off the line clean, you know? So, and we did that as soon as we were around the first mountain, I was like, Oh, sweet. All right. It's been, it's already been a success. Like, all right, here we go. And then we just, we kept driving. We were going slow. We were passing broken cars. So <laughs> uh, we didn't pass anybody like at speed. We just, we passed uh, other cars that had uh, less fortune or mechanical failures. And um, then we got into pit one pretty quick, right as we were, but we did a battery swap. And right when we were about to leave, another team ran up to us and they were like, here, uh, take this bag for us. Take it to the broken down red, white, and blue car. It's like three miles up you know, we take this parts for us to, to our team. I was like, hell yeah, of course, you know, toss it in. So we, we get moving and we didn't get to that car yet. And I hit a rock with the passenger tire. We might've been going too fast. I don't know. I didn't hit it like that hard, but it was hard enough. It broke the steering. Oh no. So, yeah. So we pulled over and we tried to use ratchet straps and a breaker bar to like kind of tie it back together. And that did not work at all. We kept moving though. We found another broken racer and we asked for like better tool. They had way better tools. So we kind of dug into it a little bit more. And then at that point we either, we took a look in the bat, the spare parts bag that we were taking to the car and like the exact part that we needed was in the bag. 
like exactly <laughs> what we the bolt fit into our steering and like we made it work and it was perfect like when we were bolting it together I was, it's like the coolest trail fix ever it was as strong as it was before it was broken like dead serious like it was perfect like as you could possibly make it like you could it was it was sick but i was getting really nervous i was like oh delia like we're supposed to take this part to the other guy. It's their part. Like, and she's like, no, 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 don't worry. Like we're still bringing it to him. You know, you got to get it there. <laughs> like, all right. All right. So we got in the car we started moving and it's like, perfect. The steering's perfect. We're like jamming. It's like strong. So, I mean, we, we, sl- we turned it down though. We weren't going fast. And um, we roll up and the guy's standing on the side and he's like, you got it. And it was like, dude, we used it. He's like, what are you talking about? I was like, we used the part. It's on the car right now. He's like, what do you mean? Your, your steering broke too? We're like, dude, it broke after the pit and it's on the car. And he's like, and he thought for a second and he goes, get out of here, go. I was like, what are you talking about, man? Like, really? He's like, dude, go, go, get out of here. You're all together. We'll figure it out. Have a bitching day. You go for your race, man. And I was like, that's oh, i was like dude let's we're gonna pull over and we're gonna try to fix your car like let's figure this out you know what i mean it's your part like let's figure it out so we pulled over and i ran up to his car and he didn't need that part at all we, we used a steering clevis that was in the bag he needed a heim and that was also in the bag that was another part that was in nice. there nice so we got his car back together with the heim he needed we we borrowed or we I still it's still on the car we still have his clevis that i guess the, the team just threw in there as a spare part in case that's what they meant you know when they said hi maybe they meant clevis right so we we both got we, both cars were on the road and we both took off like that was super cool that he was that nice even though he didn't like he, he was actually going to let us go with his part that he needed but it turned out both cars were fixed so um that's rad yeah it's really cool and then we got through Cougar Buttes. We were only in three-wheel drive because the front right wheel stopped pulling because the RCV pulled out of the diff. So we got through Cougar Buttes in three-wheel drive and then just finished the rest of the race. We went slow from then on because we really didn't want to break again. That was like two and a half hours of downtime, all said. Um, so we just kind of went slow. We only had ourselves to beat. Uh, so we just didn't we didn't beat ourselves. We just wanted to get to the finish. Um, got to pit again had a battery swap everything was good um and then we we took our time getting into the finish line so that our crew had enough time to get back on the highway so they could see us in because if we jammed we probably would beat them so like we saw some course workers way out in the middle of nowhere like we can't race unless the course workers and the volunteers do their thing to keep the course safe for us so when we would see them we'd do some donuts and stuff and honk the horn and then uh keep moving um and then we, we got into Hammertown and it was like, it was just crazy. It was what pulling up on the stage and being asked the questions by the guy and everything. Like it was, it was, I think it was Doug something. I think he said his name was, I don't know. It was, it was surreal. I can't explain it. And you know, like, it was, it was very, very cool. Very cool. Uh, you mentioned swapping batteries a couple of times. Um, what does it look like to swap batteries on your rig? And then how far of a range were those batteries giving you? So the, the car came with a 24 kilowatt hour battery. That's what was in the, like the first, uh, basically the first generation Leafs. So that's what we made our first rack with. And then we kind of realized well, we're going to need more batteries. So the, the very latest generation Leaf, the 2019 and ups, they came with a 62 kilowatt hour battery. So it's like triple the range about. So we got one. They were, it was really hard to find because they're new. So they're all in brand new cars, right? But we found one in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and we were able to get it shipped. Um, and we took it apart, and the cells were different. So, but we needed to make them fit the same racks that we already did. So we 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 did that. And so basically, between the two styles of batteries, we had a, a small capacity battery or a big capacity battery. I bought I bought another small capacity battery on Craigslist. So we had two small capacity batteries. And one big capacity battery. Yeah, that's the small one right there. That's the first one we worked on. So that what you're looking at right there, that's, yeah, so that's one full pack. With that style of battery, it's two racks, right? So that's one full battery. The car will run on that. And we made it so that you can fit another full pack in the middle, right? So it's four racks together, but it's two full batteries. That's what the small capacity so we can hold two small capacities at once, 
or we can take all four of those out and put four racks in, and that's one big battery. That's what we did. I don't know if I went over that too much, but basically we we, we got to Hammertown to pit one with the small batteries, and then we swapped out for the big battery to get around the 48-mile loop, and then we went back to the small batteries to get back into Hammertown. That's, that's, that's what we did. And we charged the small battery at pit with the generator and a charging system. So um, the bit, the big battery is pretty cool. It goes for a while. We were seeing about one mile per kilowatt hour. So with the big battery in the car with a full charge, you get a good 60 miles, depending on how hard you are in the car, you get 60 miles of runtime. And, you know, when you're just having fun with your friends driving around, that's, that's a while, that's hours of fun. Um, so we, it's, it's pretty, we took it on a night ride after the race and we were, or the weekend after the race. And we, we spent over an hour and 15 minutes. I was playing with razors, so they're not worried about range or anything. And we were, uh, it was like an hour and 15 minute ride. I got it on my lead nav. It was like 22 miles or something like that. We had the lights on the whole time and it, it still had tons of juice when we got back to camp. So it's still really useful as like a fun car too. Nice. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, other than the, uh, steering and the shaft pulling out of the diff, did you guys break anything else? That was it. Everything worked like a dream. I, everything we did to the car, the whole electrical system worked great. The only thing that we did have was the car kept shutting off. So seemingly at random times, it seemed to be when it was at like part throttle, like the motor would just stop communicating and you would have no drive. So you just need to turn the car off and turn it back on again. Uh, that was annoying. We probably did that over 40 or 60 times during the day. It oh, might have wow. been. Um, and it would happen at inopportune times too. So we're using the regen to go down hills and I'm using it as a break. And it would like let go. And then you start like accelerating down this rocky hill and I'm jumping on the brakes and they suck because it's an 86 Toyota. <laughs> so <laughs> we did nothing to prep. You know what I mean? We bled them, but they're, they're terrible. And, um, so I was counting on the regen and it would just like let go and it would be like, all right, hang on. Like, oh, shit, here we go. And trying to turn it off and turn it back on while we're going down a hill and everything. And, um, I can see the IT guy. Did you try turning it on and off again? Exactly. It's amazing how often it works. It's ridiculous. But uh, I, I've since found that problem. I figured out what it was. Um, it, it's the, it had to do with the way the BMS was communicating with the, with the VCU. I, I, I fixed that problem. Now, now it's like super reliable now. But that's how it was on race day. But yeah, no, nothing we did. The batteries were great. The racking system were great. The motor were great. The shaft, the coupler, everything we did was spot on. It was just mechanicals. Because it's a whopped out old race car. So <laughs> that's what you get. Yeah. What was your uh, greatest race challenge? Uh, right when we left the start finish line and you go around the first hill that is, uh, is actually the steepest hill of all the, of the whole day. And it's like Sandy and loose. Um, we couldn't get up, like we couldn't get up it on the first try. And there was another forerunner right in front of us that had a 22 R in it. And he was stopped on it. And I was like, gee, you know, the, it's difficult for these underpowered heavy trucks, you know? And, um, he got up, he put it in low, low and got up it. And we, we gave it hell. I got about two thirds of the way up and we stopped and I, I put it in, I put both the cases in low and I think I put it in first gear and put the ARBs on. So we were in three wheel drive because we started the race in three wheel drive. Like it was, we knew it was screwed up, but it was what it was. Right. And it, it pulled it. it. It it went up like pretty much no problem. I mean, we had to get rough on it, but it made it. And that was super relieving because I knew that was the heaviest hill all day, you know? And then after that was Cougar Buttes. That was the most technical driving all day for sure. But we only had to get out of the car once to spot. Um, I'd, be, I'd seen the place once before. I'd never driven it. Um, but it went really good in there, uh, considering it's basically manual steering and manual brakes uh, for technical crawling So, and three-wheel drive. So it it's cool. Like if you if you have traction and you put it in low range – and you put your pedal down, like it goes, like there's a lot of instant torque, just like you might think. So it, it crawls pretty well. So. Do you have a favorite section that you did or a best section? Pro oh, Cougar Buttes for sure. Like that was, yeah. that was pretty sick. Like it, it's 
it was technical and we there was also a bunch of cars there that was probably the most cars we saw all day they were broken or fixing their stuff or they had rolled over or whatever so it, it kind of felt like we were passing people you know i mean technically we were but i don't know so yeah that was that was probably the best one i'd say what's the biggest thing that you learned this year that's going to give you an edge next year oh data the data we have on our on our range and our batteries and what what we know we can get out of them um for sure uh not really like yeah that's what i would say i would say the data and um if depending on what we do because we we have a lot more we can start a lot sooner than october now we might we might do something a little different we might make something else um if we do that we might go with a different drive system and a different battery management system if that's the case then i'll be learning all over again but if not, if we just improve this car and race it, um, then I, I have a really, I'm really comfortable with this car and how it works. So if we have a problem on the trail I, and I'm there, I should be able to fix it relatively quickly. So that, that's what I would say is that I, I, I know the car really well. What were the other competitors and spectators reaction to your rig? Uh, it was, it was cool that we didn't, we didn't spend as much time in Hammertown as we should have. Probably we were just busy, like actually still finishing the car while we were at hammers. Um, so like the, the whole week we were mostly in our camp making it happen. Um, but when we did come through for tech and uh, the few times we were in Hammertown would be like, it's really busy in there. Um, and you'd kind of be like driving very slowly because people can't hear you. So they're right in front of you. And you, I don't want to run them over. I'm not going to blare the horn at them. And they finally kind of turn around and see, and they're like, and they see you, and they kind of walk over, and then they double take, and they're like, oh, that's the electric car. That's what's so quiet. Like, you can hear everybody. <laughs> you can hear them pretty easily. It's dead silent. <laughs> so, it was like, that's, so that was that was neat. Every, everybody who, like, recognized what it was, like, was talking about it. But some people didn't even recognize it because it's just you slip right through like, like nothing. So um, it was cool. So you're going to add uh, fake engine noise next year for just driving through Hammertown. So what I think we'll, we, we've actually really tossed it around or at least have, we, we were going to do a boom box and like play like, uh, you know, all like songs that have to do with electricity, you know, <laughs> like thunderstruck or uh, electric <laughs> feel uh, stuff like that. <laughs> and what else, what, what I also want, what I was going to try to do was have a boom box and then have a Bluetooth microphone hooked up to it. And then just mount the microphone down by the motor under the hood because it really does make a cool noise. It it sounds sick. It's like zoo, like it, it makes a sick noise. It's just really quiet. So I, I wouldn't want it to sound like a V8. I want it to sound the way it sounds, just louder. You know. What What about the? <laughs> are you familiar with the old cartoon, The Jetsons? So I guess they played that over the speakers while we took off the line. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's what everyone said. I don't know. I wasn't there. People were like, oh, it's hilarious. Like, it was going nice. Hey, you know, you can't hear it. So it's like, bruh, 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 come on over the speakers. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. You can, anything. Anything. Think of, um, you know, have you have you seen uh, Donut Media's Wish, uh, the turbo, um, the pretend turbo? It's uh, it, you mount it under the hood. You push a button whenever you push in your exhaust. Uh, your uh, gives you whenever you push the gas. There's a button you attach to it, and it uh, gives you that fake whoosh from a turbo. That'd be sick. There, there you go. Perfect <laughs> for you. You can get it on Wish too. Boost. <laughs> Blow off valve on the electric car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there it is. Uh, well, before we close out, uh, do you have any supporters you'd like to thank? Yeah, um, I'd like to thank Raceline Wheels. Uh, they got a set up. They got a setup with beadlocks. Um, uh, Pro Eagle, Pro, Pro Eagle Jacks, um, and uh, Mile Star Tires. We we were on the during the race we were on Grabbers, but uh, now now we're with Mile Star. So super excited to have them on, on the team. And so those were the more uh, uh, like. Uh, part sponsor so to speak but like for sure team baker team baker helped out with the grabbers uh and just helped out so much in general with the knowledge and uh, support in every way like every everyone in the everyone in my camp and uh 
everyone on team Baker was like so cool and so helpful. Um, I want to thank Will, Will Spec Garage, uh, is his handle on Instagram and, and his wife and, and his sons for putting up with me for four months. Uh, I want to thank, I want to thank my parents. They're always so supportive of me, my girlfriend and, um, everybody, my sister, uh, Paul, Nolan and Tim, they were like, uh, sort of like wild card friends that I met at hammers and they like jumped into the team, like two feet and helped out so much, uh, getting the car ready for the week before. Like they spent their hammers helping me. So cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Uh, my cousins who come out and, um, just, just, just everybody. Yeah. It was, it was, I couldn't have done it alone. There's no way. Uh, so it was, it was certainly a team effort. Um, one well, thing, Charlie, I, 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 if I start naming names, I'll, I'll have to, I'll, I'll miss somebody. So everybody, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. Sure. And thank you guys. Thank you guys for having me on and kind of getting the story out and getting EVs out there. Um, I, I think that it, that's the way things are going to go. Uh, I, I love V8s. My other truck has Gatling gun headers coming out of the hood. I don't know if that, if that, yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm not like, you know, in it, Fully for the environmental, that's part of it. That's that's a good thing. Um, I think there's benefits to be had, and I think the fastest car pretty soon will be electric, like it or not. Uh, it's coming. So uh, thank you for putting that out there and getting me on. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're not afraid of, uh, of the coming electric um, changeover of, of vehicles. I mean, we, we still have holdouts that we want. We want there to be uh, internal combustion happening as well, but uh, a lot of good things can happen with uh, electric motors and rigs for sure. I think so. I think so. I'll, I'll have I'll have gas motors for the rest of my life. I always will. Um, but for sure, I, I think if done right and as the technology progresses, man, they're gonna they're gonna be sick. And mm -hmm. it's you know it's 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 happening. It's kind of like Cars Three. Sorry. I haven't seen that. I do. I do really like cars. I didn't see Cars Three. Anyway. I don't. Know. Well, thanks to everyone who listens to us weekly and those who watch us live on YouTube. We appreciate you, and uh, please share us with your friends and help us grow. And God bless America. Don't forget to visit Patriot Patch and join the Patch of the Month Club. Check out our Gaia affiliate link for up to 40% off. Also, don't forget to head over to Warren and Power Tank to see all of their great gear. We are a proud part of the Firearms Radio Network. Got a question or comment? Send it to us through our webpage at firearmsradio.tv or through our social media channels by searching for Off-Road Podcast. Also, you can listen to us live at overlandradio.com, Mondays at 7 p.m. Pacific. When off-road, please remember to have fun, tread lightly, be safe and courteous, and thanks for listening. <laughs> oh, he took off. There it is.